being able to pull off the street theater pretty well. All right. Well, let's let's bring in some of our small business all stars. Uh, we have a collection of them here. David MacArthur of MacArthur's Bakery in St. Louis, entrepreneur Jen Groover is here. Brett McMahon of Miller and Long Concrete Construction. He says it's the unions that need reform. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, but I want to go to you first, David MacArthur, because the the key point here is the president wants to set himself up as your protector. He represents small business, not big business. Do you buy it? I don't buy it. You know, these deals that are set up right now, they're protecting the big banks. And as uh, I recall, it's the big banks that when I call them, I don't even forget it. I'm a non-existent individual as far as it's concerned. In today's world of small business, if you don't know a small bank or have a relationship with a small banking firm or banker, you're done. And this deal that they're making right now is going to make it so un, uh, uneven, the playing field for small banks, that uh, you know our friend in small business are, are going to be a thing of the past, You know, just typical of the administration's attempt to... Uh, when it's nothing left but the big guys, the control is easy to uh, to rule. And Jen, we've had a lot of small bakers, uh, bankers on. We've had some small bakers <laughs> as well, but bankers also who say we are having going to have a very tough time with this bill. While the, the because we couldn't afford the carve outs, the big guys could. Well, the the biggest problem is there. For First of all, any small business owners do not align philosophies of unions. So that's the first thing that doesn't make sense to me. Small business owners and unions could not be more different in their philosophies. Small business owners are so independent and self-sufficient, and they're not entitled to anything. They want to work for everything. But, so they're not mad at Wall Street as much as they are at the government for not paying attention to them. So if President right. Obama wants to and the administration want to do something, they need to look at Dodd Bill that came out this week, basically saying angel investors can't help small business owners now. Or there's going to be all different. But that's the bill they support. Exactly. That's that's the irony of it. This is what doesn't make sense. So if you're really supporting small business owners and you want to get out there, don't send unions out to create protests. Actually, speak to the small business owners and understand. Go out and work in small businesses for days at a time and understand what these people are going through to make payroll, to try and get money from a bank, to try and get an advance, to have their inventory shipped out before they get their money back to them, to know what the daily things that these small business owners are going through to struggle, not having unions go go right. and start rallies. Brett, uh, you know, I'm looking at a list of the SEIU demonstrations around the country. San Francisco, April 27th, Charlotte, North Carolina, Kansas City, April 28th, April 29th, the one here in New York. It goes on and on. Do you think they're going to be able, the administration will actually carry this off, pretending that they represent the small guy, whether it's the small unions or the small businesses, when in fact it's the big guys that are getting into the White House? You know, I, I think the American public is far smarter than this administration has shown uh, willingness to give them credit for it till now. I mean, every time, every time organized labor gets out and does one of these mass things, it's watch the birdie time. Uh, they're, what they're trying to do uh, is actually divert attention away from this pending collapse that they're facing. Uh, the organized labor uh, pushes pension funds on people. And if you're a rank-and-file member out there in, in organized labor, you need to understand something, that that uh, uh, organized labor has set up a system that these pensions are literally evaporating before your eyes. In construction, only 55% uh, of uh, pensions have uh, you know money to make uh, their future obligations. It's impossible to recover from that situation. But you know, uh, Trumka and Stern and Berger and all these Trumka other from AFL, their CIO, funds, Stern from SEIU. Go ahead. Yeah, they have 100% uh, of the money in their pensions. So oh, these people know what they're, they're making doing. Out of base, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, the problem is, is, is really one that the rank and file ought to be confronting their bosses and saying, look, right. uh, where is the money that we've been putting aside, sometimes 4 or 5% per week? What has happened to it? Why is it gone? Why are we still trapped in these things? And then organized labor ought to be able to answer to the American taxpayer because right now they've got at least three bills in Congress pushing for a taxpayer-funded bailout of these pension plans. And, again, we're talking about... Right. Figures in the end of 2006, according to the PBGC, these plans were underfunded by 200 billion dollars. Oh, it's Dow amazing. They're going above. And don't forget, by the way, that we, the taxpayer, already spent about 100 billion dollars, essentially giving two car companies to the union, to the UAW, to about 49,000 UAW right. workers. Right. And this is going to continue because uh, this is their big problem. Earlier this year, January 28th. 
PBGC took over a pension fund in Southern California and Eastern Nevada for glaziers, the guys put glass right. on the building. It's 5,200 people on this plan. It only had $26 million in the bank at the end of 2007, and they owe $266 million. I know. So they had 9.9% .9 of the money required to meet future These obligations. These things are so poorly orchestrated, organized, and again, it's the taxpayers who going to bail them out. Tim, the other, Tim Carney, the other thing that we have to remember about these demonstrations that we're seeing all over the country is that a lot of the people going to them, they're these sort of professional demonstrators that the, that the SEI use. You go to them, you see some of the people quoted in there. They're not the actual grunt workers that the unions are supposed to represent. These are people that get the, the nice salary for sitting in offices and going to demonstrations. And I, when I see the unions being used like this, it's the same as when I saw a lot of my liberal friends being used in the health care debate to pretend to, they would go out and they would rail against the insurance companies they probably actually hate in support of a bill that's handing the drug companies millions and mandating insurance. So right. you see these uh, these guys being used as pawns. It's, it's depressing. And uh, Jen, by the way, who just came out with a book called What If and Why Not, which is a book celebrating the entrepreneur and small businesses, which you say is still possible. Is, is this going to make Make it more difficult to start a new business, the kind of regs that we're likely to see? Absolutely it is. I, 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 most of my friends and colleagues, they start their business by getting funding from friends and family, people that aren't, aren't going to fit the criteria, the angels, now the, the angels. angels. And so it's going to make it a struggle, the tax burdens, the health care, there's all these things that it, they're saying as an administration, we're, we're for Main Street, we're for the small business owners, but the actions are, are against that. It's controversy to that. So the, the problem is there's already fear there, now it's making it a lot Lot worse. Jen Groover, good to see you. David MacArthur, always a pleasure. Brett, Brett McMahon, always. good to see you. And of course, Tim Carney down in D.C. And we want to know what you folks think out there. The president, he's portraying himself as a defender.